Good morning, everyone. We would like to welcome you to Sabbath School. Let's, Let's study. study. Praise the Lord that He has given us another opportunity to study His words together. And let's sing together as we have our opening song. Our opening song, let us sing, Praise Him, Praise Him. Hymn number 249, Praise Him, Praise Him. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Sing, O world, His wonderful love proclaim. Hail Him, hail Him, glory, strength and honor give to His holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard His children. In his arms he cares them all day long. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. From our sins he suffered and bled and died. He our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Hail him, hail him, Jesus the crucified. Sound his praises, Jesus who bore our sorrow. Love unbounded, wonderful, deep and strong. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer, heavenly portals, God with your Son a stream. Jesus, Savior, crown Him, crown Him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is coming over the world, glorious power and glory over the Lord belong. Praise Him, praise Him, tell His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Let's have our opening prayer with Brother Ed. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord, for this wonderful morning as we are about to study, O oh God. Just be in the midst of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Ed. Good morning, everyone. We'd like to welcome you once again to Sabbath School. Let's study. We are so happy that the Lord has given us another opportunity to study His words together. So let me greet uh, itong kasama natin ngayon na sa ating uh, comment section. We have Sister Janet Yu. Good morning, Sister Jen Sarte, Almi Barte, Sister Susan Mojica, uh, Sister Anne Catherine Yao. We also have uh, Sister Jenny Donato. Ayan, good morning po. Thank you for joining us. Sama din natin si Jaime uh, Sebastian. <laughs> Ayan, thank you for joining us. We have Joe uh, Leong and Harold uh, Odani. Praise the Lord. And again, we are encouraging you to interact with us, especially have we, as we have our discussion. Lagay nyo lang po yung comment, hindi kayo yung mga questions sa ating comment section. And um, you want to stick with us, especially as we have our lesson trivia later on, because we are going to give away a new ebook. Uh, the mimigay natin is about, uh, ano ito? Does God Inspire Psychics? <laughs> Ayan, sige. That uh, may kinalaman yan patungol sa gift of prophecy. So you want to receive that ebook, so make sure that you stick with us until we have our, at least until we have our lesson trivia. So let's have a dive into our lesson discussion. Let's, I mean, lesson study. Today is February 24, and we're going to read uh, Wednesday. Wednesday lesson, uh, Hope in Advance. The fact that Isaiah accurately predicted Cyrus by name distorts people who don't believe that prophets receive predictions from God. To cope, they accept the theory that a second Isaiah 
another prophet living in the time of Cyrus, wrote Isaiah 40 until uh, chapter 66. Thus, the book of Isaiah is sown in two. The same fate traditionally understood to have befallen the prophet himself. Uh, let us read Hebrews 11, verse 37. Hey, Jalai, can you read this one? Hebrews 11, 37. Hmm? They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with a sword, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. Thank you so much, Jelai. So you notice this one, um, what people are doing with the book of Isaiah is parang ganyan din ang dinanas ng mga propeta ng Panginoon. Uh, they were torn asunder, pinagtahi-tahi sila. The thing is, it's a terrible thing for the prophets of God. This is, however, going back to the lesson, thank you for reading that, Jelai. This is, however, no historical, uh, there is, however, no historical witness to the existence of a second Isaiah. If he did exist, it would be strange for the Bible not to mention him because his message is profoundly important and his literary artistry is phenomenal. Not even the oldest Bible manuscript, the Isaiah scroll from Qumran, has any break between Isaiah 39 and 40 that would indicate a transition to the work of a new author. So there is no... Um, evidence or proof of a second Isaiah and even doon sa Qumran or yung Dead Sea Scroll, there is no gap between Isaiah 39 and Isaiah 40. Isaiah's basic message is consistent throughout his book. Trust the Lord, the true God, excluding, I mean, including his messianic deliverer rather than other powers. Scor scholars rightly emphasize the shift in focus from Assyrian, from the Assyrian period in Isaiah 1 to 39 to the Babylonian period in Isaiah uh, in chapters 40 and following. But we have found that Isaiah 13 and 14 and 39 already envisage a Babylonian captivity. And we've studied this in our previous um, lessons that even before the Babylonians came, it was already envisioned by Isaiah. It is true, Isaiah 1, chapter 1 until 39, emphasizes judgment, and Isaiah 40 until 66 emphasizes consolation. But in the earlier chapters, divine comfort and assurance are abundant also. And later passages, such as Isaiah 42, 18 to 25, and the rest of mentioned here, speak of God's judgment on Judah for forsaking him. In fact, Isaiah's predictions of future comfort imply suffering in the meantime. Though the nation did face terrible calamity because of the people's sin, some among them did not give up hope. They clung to God's promises, such as those found in Leviticus 26, uh, 40 to 45. We're going to read this later on. Read the verses carefully. Put yourself in the place of those Hebrew who were alive after the nation's defeat by Babylon. What hope could you find in these words? And so we're going to read this. Read once through Leviticus 26, 40 to 45. Okay, let's read this, uh, Brother Neil. Leviticus 26, 40 to 45. If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary to me, and that also have walked contrary unto them, and have brought them into the land of their enemies, if then their uncircumcised hearts be humble, and they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity, then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham, will I remember, and I will remember the land. The land also shall be left of them, and shall enjoy her Sabbaths, while she lieth desolate without them, 
and they shall accept of the punishment of their iniquity, because even because they despised my judgments, and because their soul abhorred my statutes. And yet for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away. Neither will I abhor them, to destroy them utterly, and to break my covenant with them, for I am the Lord their God. But I will, for their sakes, remember the covenant of their ancestors, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt, in the sight of the heathen, that I might be their God. I am the Lord. Thank, thank you so much for reading that, Brother Neil. So let's first talk about, there are a number of questions here. Um, what spiritual principles do you see at work in these verses? What is the Lord saying to Israel here and there? And what does the same principle, um, in how does the same principle work in our own lives? Okay, so um, let's talk about this. There are uh, the last two questions here. I mean, um, what spiritual principles do you see at work in these verses? And what is the Lord saying to Israel there? So let's talk about this first. And then this, the application the application question, let's talk about it in the next portion. You know, after the trivia. Itong how does the same principle up, uh, work in our own lives? So let's just focus here on what is the Lord telling the people of Israel here. And let's connect this with a previous question. What hope could you find in these words? Itong, ano ba itong sinabi ng Panginoon sa Israel? And if we are in, in their place during this time of Babylonian captivity, what hope does this promise give, give you if in case you are, you are in, their, in their shoe? So let's talk about this. And those of you who are watching live, we are discussing... Leviticus 26 verses 40 to 45. Anong itong sinasabi ng Panginoon sa Israel, bayan ng Israel? And anong pag-asa na maibibigay nito sa iyo kung ikaw yung nasa kanilang lugar? So ayan. And drop your comments in our comment section. And well, let's begin with Jelai for our discussion. Jelai, share your thoughts about this. Yes, um, um I believe na yung ano yung mga when babylon conquered um, the people of god juda i believe may mga nasali doon na inosente na faithful and it's very sad na na nasali sila or nasali sila sa naging outcome ng ng transgression ng overall israel no but it's so amazing kasi nga um whenever kahit ang dami-dami na pong ginawa na kasalanan ng Israel but the Lord has not left them left them behind um ano um gumagawa pa rin ang Panginoon ng paraan or way for them to for them to recant or come out now sa according po sa mababasa na nabasa natin sa Leviticus meron pong principles dito no na pwede, pwede nating makuha we know that we are all sinners we have fallen short of the glory of God and how how to come back to God ba so meron po dito mga principles brothers and sisters sinabi po first sa verse 14 na if they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass so makikita natin dito na yung spiritual principle na makukuha natin dito is confession there should be a um um recognition of of the sin of our sins and then after that confession and not only that um repentance of course and after that um meron pong parang inano dito na dapat bumawi ka or restitu restitution no so makikita natin niyan sa verse um uh, 45 44 44 45 46 so confession 
ay repentance, yun po, um, restitution. And this process po, if we are able to do the to do this, God is always has this always open arms po to receive us again. And nakita po natin dito na God will remember His covenant. Kasi yung covenant ng Panginoon, andun, lang, andun pa rin. The covenant that He will be a God to His people. He will deliver them. He will be always with them. However, yung nakapag-prevent lang po to, to make that happen to them is that their iniquities. And so, if, if mawala na tong iniquity because they confessed, repented, and gave restitution, then automatic po na mafulfill po yung covenant ng Panginoon sa kanila. So, and that's the same with us. Thank you so much for highlighting that, Jelai. So, nakita na principles dito ni Jelai as what she mentioned is a confession, repentance, and restitution. O yung pagsasa, pagsasauli, no? And uh, yes, indeed. And as what Jelai mentioned as well, once we do this as well, is, I mean, if, even though, yeah, there is sin, and that's the reason for the captivity, but once the sin is gone, then we will be reconciled with God. So certainly this is giving hope, especially if um, you are a part of those innocent people who are nadamay lang, no? nadamay doon sa Babylonian captivity. <laughs> that would have been very miserable. But we can claim these promises by God that He is not leaving us alone in, uh, despite of our situation. Uh, how about you, Brother Ed? Uh, share your thought about this question. So I think uh, we need to consider there, na una, uh, sa verse 14, no, not only that they should uh, confess for their own iniquity, but for their fathers as well. So, alam naman po natin minsan, as children, we inherit the, the, the sins of our fathers. No? Although, hindi naman po yung hereditary po, no? but it's really repeats itself kasi, you know, yung tendency lang po ba. But, uh, tanda po natin, it was emphasized also in, that was emphasized in Leviticus 26 verse 40. Ano po yung nakita po natin doon? Also, we need to acknowledge, you know, I think, uh, connected din ito kasi dun sa verses, uh, we are focusing Leviticus 26 verses 40 and to 45 now. So, yung isa nakita ko doon, we need to acknowledge yung uh, paging anon po natin ba? Paging guilty po natin doon sa mga kasalanan po natin sa Panginoon over the course of time. Yeah, especially in those, in those times na mga uh, in these Hebrews na to. And also, makita natin dito that God is really long-suffering po. He's very patient for us. At saka hindi talaga tayo iniwan ng Panginoon. Hindi, hindi talaga iniwan, hindi sila iniwan ng Panginoon. And not only that, although God will brought judgment to them, pero uh, God has been uh, merciful, no? bibigay pa talaga ng pag-asa talaga ang Panginoon sa kanila. And ano pa, nakita natin doon. Not only that they need to repent, but they need to be genuinely repent sa kanilang mga kasalanan and not only uh, ano lang, pagkukunwari o paging hypocrite. Kasi nga, once na, alam naman, alam naman po natin mga kaibigan that God knows our heart. So God uh, wants them to have the true repentance po mga kaibigan from uh, these people. And not only that, uh, nakita din po natin doon, um, so verse 41 is um, ang kailangan sa kanila ng Panginoon is they need to humble themselves and they need to accept punishment of their iniquity. Uh, and again po, we need to recognize as we will be uh, pag una na nagkasala na tayo sa Panginoon, expect na po natin that we will receiving punishment sa ating mga pakasalanan. Alam po lang po natin oh, how God is very uh, ano, serious when it comes to sinning. So, pero yung panawagan sa kanila ng Panginoon that they need to humble themselves, they need to recognize, and um, alaw God, no? Napaguhin po sila mga kaibigan. And so much so, na 
di ba yung pangako din ni sa 26 ng Panginoon, that I will remember my covenant with Jacob, no? and so on and so forth. So, ang hiniling lang sa atin ng Panginoon, mga kaibigan, as He did to these Hebrews, no? ng panahon na ito, is they need to 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 put God, no? Unang-una sa kanilang buhay. Yes, nagsina, nagkasalanan na sila eh. Because, maybe, because of idolatry, no? maybe because of turning against God, pero still God is accepting them. No? Parang sa atin lang din, no? Because God is very patient with us kasi mahal niya po tayo mga kaibigan. So I think God is very patient and not, not only that, nakita po natin sa 42 is sabi ng Panginoon, I will still uh, um, ano tawag dito? I will still um, ano, ipuprovide niya pa rin kung ano yung na-promise niya uh, sa bayan ng Israel. Even to us mga kaibigan. Yun lang po. Praise the Lord. Thank you for uh, emphasizing that, Brother Ed. No, and I mentioned me, Brother Ed, uh, as well, highlighting this. Even confessing the iniquities of their father, I just like to um, what you call it, add something into that as well. This is actually pointing out, like, uh, parang intercessory. Ito. Uh, it doesn't mean really that the, the, the yung kasalanan ng yung mga fathers ay pinasa sa That's not a biblical teaching, but rather you just I mean, mention their iniquities to the Lord, and we can even uh, we can really do that in prayer as well. And ayan, uh, as what Brother Ed mentioned as well, napakalaga that we should <laughs> recognize our sinfulness and come to the Lord and ask for His um, mercy. Uh, Jelly, you have a question that you'd like to ask? Um. <laughs> Uh, kasi ano, di ba may um, other group of Christians na they okay. believe na you can be baptized for your own sin or for your your iniquity. However, you can be baptized as well um, representing your forefathers na hindi na baptized at yun, nagkasala. So you can be baptized. So I think siguro merong misinterpretation sa principle na ito Siguro nabasa nila itong verse na to. <laughs> but yun, yun <laughs> yung comment or question. Yeah, you meaning um like uh, ikaw yung humingi ng tawad para mapatawad yung tawag nito yung iyong mga forefathers? Is that what you mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, ultimately, uh, this is what you call of course we can we can pray about that. Uh but that but it's the prerogative would belong to the Lord. And the thing is, kasalanan kasi is in individual. We should really, and once you die, the Bible is telling us you no longer have, I mean, your probation already closes at death. So regardless if ano pang panalangin na uh, gawin mo dyan, I mean, the salvation sake, uh, yung salvation sake ng mga forefathers mo, you really cannot do anything with that. Um, what this is actually talking about is yung ano ba? Um, praying about the result of their iniquity. Yung resulta ng kanilang iniquity. And also, I just like to emphasize something with this verse. I mean, yeah, ito yung naging resulta yung kanilang iniquity. So we pray that the Lord, Lord, remove this from us. And we ask that the Lord to help us through this one. And we cannot even just say, okay, um, I- ibig sabihin nun, ipinasa sa kanila yung, kan- yung kasalanan ng kanilang forefathers. Not, not even necessarily because sabi dito sa verse, uh, okay, verse 43. This is Isaiah 26 verse 43. Sabi dito, even because they despise my judgment and because their soul abhorred my statutes. So it's not just basically because, okay, um, yun yung kasalanan ng kanilang forefathers, that's why all of them really have to suffer. They're, the reality is that sila mismo talaga, those people that are in that generation as well, have really transgressed the Lord. And... Another thing is with regards Jaan. Tawag nito. 
Ayan, yeah, co co cor corporate or congregational uh, prayings. <laughs> prayings at church. Sa salvation wise, you can only just really present yourself to the Lord. You cannot pray for someone else's salvation. So this is just talking about their iniquity, not about the salvation of the forefathers. Huh? Ang, ang mini-mention dito is confess the iniquity of the forefathers, not, not saying that we pray that they will be saved. So that's completely different thing. And that would be a gross um, understanding of, <laughs> of the word iniquity and saying that that is the equivalent to if you pray for their iniquity, that means that they are going to gonna be saved no actually what we can pray for is the the removal of the effect of this, those iniquity not their salvation i hope that uh, clarifies that one okay sige um how about brother neil thank you so much jalai for uh highlighting that Brother Neil, share your thought about this. And those of you who are watching, if you have other clarifications, just drop your comments. Or if you have any question, drop it here in the comment section. And share your thought about this as well. Ang uh, natin dito, itong Leviticus 26, 40 to 45. If you were in the shoe of the Hebrew people uh, during this time, or Israel, um, the people of Judah during this time, people of Israel, how can these verses and these principles give you hope? Yeah, good morning po mga kapatid. Um, makikita po natin doon sa Leviticus 26, 40-45 yung God's unbreakable nature kapag pinag-uusapan po yung kanyang covenant. Kasi pag sinabi po natin covenant, agreement, yung tipanan, ibig sabihin mayro agreement. Pati hindi po yung Panginoon yung nagbe-break. The one who break the agreement first is yung Israelite. They breach the contract nga nga. Kaya nga, ang sabi ng Panginoon, starting from 40, although they have seen, nagkasala po sila, mayroon na pong advance promise po yung Panginoon. Kasi nakita niya na po eh. Sa, sa Leviticus, makikita na po yung promise ng Panginoon kapag nangyari yung isang bagay. Kasi uh, Leviticus is uh, malayo pa po doon sa event na pinangyarihan po sa panahon ni Daniel na kung saan po sinako po yung, yung bansang Israel. But God promised, sabi, although they are wicked, they have turned away from me, they apostatize, ang pangako po ng Panginoon, if they confess, ayun po, if they confess their sins. So makikita po natin, if there is acknowledgement, yun niya, there is recognition, there is conviction, deep within, that they deserve punishment. Kasi ang problema po, minsan kapag ikaw ay nakakaranas po, di ba? We can see one of principle here is, uh, although hindi ka, iniisip po natin minsan hindi tayo deserving, di ba? I, I do not deserve this. But God is telling us there, especially in 41, sabi po dito, and that I also have walked contrary unto them, have brought them into the land of their enemies, if then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled, and they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity. So makikita po natin yung pagtanggap. Pero gaya po na sinabi ng aking mga kasama, may mga iilan po doon na they are innocent, they are faithful to God. Like for example, yung si Daniel and the friends of Daniel, they were innocent. And sabi pa nga, nadamay lang sila doon sa kasalanan ng kanilang mga magulang. But then, makikita po natin, this is a corporate punishment po sa bansang Israel. At ang pangako po ng Panginoon ay sabi niya, God still accepts. God forgives. And ito po yung uh, pangako ng Panginoon that He is merciful and Ang problema, if God punish, tapos i-rooted niya yung lahat, ay wala na pong maiwan. Pero dito po, makikita po natin, God um, still faithful to Israel. Kahit na po sila po ay matitigas ang ulo, sila po ay tumatalikot po sa ating Panginoon ng madalas, ang Diyos ay handang magpatawad. 
Yun nga lang, kinakailangan po ng pagkilala, kinakailangan po ng pagkilala doon sa kasalanan na sila po ay kahapat dapat doon sa parusa na kanilang tinanggap. Ang tawag po ay pagkilala. Kikilalanin po nila na sila po ay nagkasala. Pagaman kasalanan po ng kanilang magulang, aakuin po nila. Diba? Yung panalala po natin yung panalangin ni Daniel, di ba po? Yung kanyang panalangin, although hindi po siya nagkasala, parang inako niya siya ay kabilang doon sa mga taong gumawa ng kasalanan. Pero makita po natin yung panalangin ng isang mapagpakumbabang tao. So, we have to acknowledge yun niya, yung nature, lalo na doon sa kasalanan, na nag-result kung bakit nakakisip po ng punishment as a whole yung basang Israel. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Brother Neil, for emphasizing that, no? Uh, recognizing the corporate uh, the corporate fall <laughs> or corporate na kasalanan uh, ayan din uh, Jelly also mentioned that here in our chat yeah so this is an example of uh, young corporate prayer praying for the whole prayer for the whole don't just pray for yourself kasi ko, ah, it might sound even self righteous if you would say ah, lord napakabait ko naman iligtas mo ako dito sa kasalanan ng mga taong ito <laughs> that would that would almost sound like um, yung parang nangyari doon sa pub, ano ba yun? publican and the Pharisee no? uh, during the time of Jesus that would sound um, very self-righteous and as uh, rightly uh, as quoted by and I mean described by brother Neil ito kagaya din ito ng ginawa ni Daniel of course, Daniel, as we look at the Bible, Daniel is a very faithful person. But he says, we have, I mean, ibig sabihin, isinama niya ang kanyang sarili. Uh, it's like interceding, interceding for his for his people. Okay, <clears throat> thank you so much for sharing your thoughts, Brother uh, Ronil. How about you, Sister Jessalo? Um, what kind of hope can you find in here? in this passages, Leviticus 26, 40 to 45. Yes. Um, what spiritual principle do you see at work in those verses and what is the Lord saying to Israel there? So, um, I'd like to share po dito, ano, regarding these passages na binasa natin, regarding din sa reading natin ngayon. Certainly, there really is hope, no, mga kaibigan. That's just, um, how wonderful the God we serve. And the thing is that, dito po sa magbasa natin, and over and over again, ito po ay nagiging tema talaga sa Biblia, mga kaibigan, that God is giving us chances. God is giving us hope. But then that hope actually is not something na receive lang natin without um, submitting ourselves to God without accepting the conditions He has set for us. Now, regarding mm -hmm. this, um, people of Israel, mga kaibigan, we know very well that the majority of God's people really walked away, away from God. And there are only few na um, masasabi natin na naging faithful sa Panginoon. Na natiling faithful. Na natiling faithful. So, um, dito po sa verses na ito sa Leviticus chapter 26 verse 40 and 45 ito pong 41 oh, uh, napaka ano po nito para sa akin Napans na, ano, na ano po talaga ako I was moved by the verse 41 it says and that I also have walked contrary unto them and brought and have brought them into the land of their enemies if then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled and they then accept of punishment of the punishment of their iniquity and then then will i remember my covenant with jacob so mm -hmm. god never tolerates sin mm -hmm. because that's just contrary to his character mm -hmm. and sin and and because of that sinning no transgress transgressing his um word is um really separating us from him now here dito po sa verse 41 we can see na yun nga po no god never tolerates sin and god really shows us 
the consequence, saan po bang lugar sa mundong ito makikita natin or malalaman natin na walang consequence yung pagkakasala ng isang tao? So the Lord really shows to His people, this is the consequence of your sin. And those consequences are meant for us to learn, to be humble, no? Mm-hmm. To seek change, to seek transformation, to be um, reconciled again yeah. with God. Actually, it's, it's, it would be wonderful if we can, we would focus on that later on in our, uh, siguro on the, in the next portion, because that's wonderful to highlight it. Na, this is heavy, actually. Itong mm-hmm. sinabi dito sa verse 41. So, this time, Sir Jessel, uh, you go directly into the hope part. part. Yes. Um, <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> yes. Um, with the grace of no, there is hope really if we um, repent and turn away from our sins. If we be humbled and try to uh, learn from our mistakes, from our sins. No, there is hope. I just don't want to say there is hope for you. Na walang ano eh, mm-hmm. Na parang point blank lang, there is hope you will be accepted as you are. It's not like that. The message of um, salvation the in the Bible is hope in mm-hmm. the Lord, in acceptance, no? Yeah. A- accept accept the consequence and, yes. and then receive the hope of God. Yes. So, He loves us and He chastens us, mga kaibigan. So, the, the, the reason for his chastening is that so that we become changed, we become a better person and we don't um, suffer and we don't um, allow others as well to suffer because of our consequences. So, yun po. Exactly. Thank you so much, Sister Jessalus. I needed to... <laughs> I, because I want, I, I would personally want this na pag-usapan natin mabuti ito because these are very important principles that are not often discussed lalo na itong nasabi dito sa that that na in, i, inungkat dito ni Sister Jessalo sa verse 41 no uh, tingnan niyo po kasi ito accept of the punishment of their iniquity ha huh? tanggapin yung kaparusahan ng kanilang kasalanan uh, let's we will talk more about this in our next portion because the next portion kasi ng ating discussion we will tackle the question what would be how will are we going to apply uh, these principles in our lives today. Okay, so, but I mean, focusing on the hope, the hope is that once we accept, then the Lord is going to, I know, He said, I will remember my covenant with Jacob. So, merong pag-asa. So, the punishment is there, pero there is as well hope as long as we accept the consequence of, of our iniquities as well. So, ayan. Thank you so much for bringing that up, Sister Jessalu. We'll talk more about this. This is getting uh, very, very interesting, actually. i just like to highlight one more thing uh, that was not, I think, uh, was not emphasized by my companions here uh, in these verses. So, sabi dito, if, uh, emphasize ko, uh, one part of Isaiah 26, 41. If then their uncircumcised heart be humble. So, ayan, no? Uh, being humbled. So one principle here is humbling yourself. Dahil kapag hindi ka nag-humble yourself, hindi mo magagawa itong accepting of punishment. Mm. <laughs> so this is another very important principle. There's you will justify yourself. Oh, but... yes. And dyan nahahaba yung ano, usapan. Mm. Uh, gugulo na ng gugulo yan. Because you keep, will keep on justifying yourself. Especially if you tell so yourself you the next question we are going, to, mm. The next question we are going to talk about is how does the same principle work in our own lives? So uh, let's put a specifier today. Mm. How does the same principles outlined here in Leviticus 26, 40 to 45 work in our own lives today? But let's have our ano muna. Uh, those of you who are watching live, well, you, you're not seeing, uh, seeing some comments. Um, Hopefully, it's not too deep. Uh, we are trying our best to make this very, very practical for everyone. But uh, I think you will really enjoy the next portion of this discussion kasi ito yung application natin in our time today. Um, but let's have our trivia question. I mean, trivia question muna. Yes. Go ahead, brother. Can you show the trivia question? Okay. Uh, Isaiah prophesied about Cyrus 150 years before the ruler of Persia was even born. True or false? So napakadali po, true or false question lang po. If you answer this correctly, you will be receiving this ebook. Does God inspire sci- ano yan? Uh, astrologists and psychics? So this is about the gift of prophecy as well. So you want to get this ebook? Make sure you answer this one. 
And may kinalaman ito sa ating binag- uh, aralan kahapon. Okay, our timer starts now, 30 seconds. True or false lang po, Isaiah prophesied about Cyrus 150 years before the ruler of Persia was even born. Tama o mali? Ano ang ating tamang sagot? Nag- uh, our time is already rolling. Okay, true or false? Less than 15 seconds left. Okay, time is moving. Just drop your answer at our comment section. Those of you are watching from our YouTube channel and from our Facebook page. Go ahead and drop your answer. Okay, and our time is up. Time's up. Time's up na po. Ayan. So, Isaiah prophesied about Cyrus 150 years before the ruler of Persia was even born. Tama o mali, true or false? The correct answer is... True. Tama po ang tamang sagot. So congratulations for those of you who answered correctly. You'll be receiving the ebook in your inbox. Okay, sige. Uh, let me do a quick shout out muna sa ating mga super sharers yesterday. Super sharers natin. Nangunguna si Sister Joy Silvano. Thank you so much, Sister Joy Silvano. Uh, shout out to you. Uh, nag-share din, of course, si Sister Jen Sarte. Ayan, palagi yan. Maraming share. Super sharers to palagi si Sister Jen Sarte. And the rest of our viewers na nag-share, uh, we have Brother Jomar Makahilos. Uh, Brother Jomar, thank you. We have Mel, uh, Sister Bing, uh, uh, Al Prince. Ayan, thank you, Al. We have Brother Ralph Sumoso as well. Thank you so much for your support and for sharing the program. And the rest of you, ayan. Praise the Lord. Sige. Let's go back into our discussion for those of you who shared today's program. If you have not yet done so, don't forget to share a program to help us with the algorithm no? uh, so that we can reach more people and interact, react as well. The next question we are going to discuss is about the application part. Um, in our lives today, how can we uh, apply this lesson into our, I mean, these principles into our lives? Let me read some comments muna. Uh, it shows here, sabi ni Samantha Claire, it shows here na God abhors sin, but He loves the sinner. He even gave them an option. Oh. <laughs> an option is you stick with your sin and continue with uh, destruction or you leave your sin behind. Get reconciled with me. So thank you so much for sharing that, Sister Samantha Claire. So sin is something that should be eradicated. Ano po? Uh, Joy, Sister Joy Silvano, sabi niya, yes, God does not know a sinner. He does not hate uh, he does not hate. God does not know a sinner. He does not love. Uh, God does not know a sin. He won't forget. And God does not know a better time than now. So, ayan. <laughs> so, thank you so much uh, for sharing that, Sister Joy Silvano. Medyo uh, poetic to si Sister Joy ngayon. Ha? <laughs> thank you for sharing your thoughts, uh, Sister Joy. Uh, indeed, uh, God knows everything. So, God knows our sin. And let's leave that behind because God is more than willing to reconcile us as well. So thank you for your thoughts, your comments, and your joy. So um, how does the same principle work in our lives? Uh, itong mga prinsipyo na nakasaad dito sa Leviticus 40, uh, itong mga verses dito. How does the same principle work in our lives? Okay, let, I'd like to go back to Sister Jelai. Go ahead, Jelai. Uh, spark up the discussion. Mm-hmm. So yung na-share ko po kanina no about um confession repentance restitution ganun um how does the same principle apply with an with our own lives so we just need brothers and sisters to follow the steps kasi merong iba nagsasabi na paano ba ano bang gagawin ko napakalaki ng kasalanan ko ganyan di ko alam paano but the lord has these steps po na if we faithfully do it then we will really be able to come back to god so that's it po. And another thing po na principle na nakita ko pala dito, hindi ko po na share, but I will share it na lang, is makikita po sa verse 44. So sinabi po dito na, And yet for all all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away. Neither will I abhor them this, to destroy them and to break my covenant with them, for I am the Lord their God. So nung panahon na yun, Okay, Lord, tapos na kaming mag-confess, tapos na kaming mag-repent, tapos na kaming mag, 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 magpasa uli. So ngayon, Lord, kunin mo na kami dito. So hindi po ganun yung nangyari, no? They still remain in there, 
in the land of their enemies. However, the promise of the Lord is with them na God will not leave them. And that's the same with us, brothers and sisters. Maybe we have done some mistakes and then we say na, Okay, Lord, I, I'm so sorry. I've already asked forgiveness. Please, Lord, remove me from this situation. Pero there are really times na hindi ganun yung mangyayari. The Lord will not just like pluck you out of that situation na naging consequence sa kasalanan natin. Because we know and the Lord knows that putting you in that situation, meron tayong lessons na makukuhaan. It's part of the process. So we really need to ano, we really need to accept that fact kasi minsan ganun din kasi yung iniisip natin eh na okay Lord, ano, tapos na akong tapos na ako sa part ko. Gawin mo naman yung part ko na kunin mo ako dito. <laughs> Gusto ko na mag-disappear ganun. <laughs> but hindi. So, but the Lord's promise is there na although you undergo that situation na napakahirap dahil ng consequence ng kasalanan natin, but ah, uh, the Lord says here na you, even though you are in that situation or in the, in the territory of the enemy, but I will be with you, I will be your God, and I will still fulfill my covenant although you are there in that situation. So, napakaganda po. Thank you so much, Jelai, for highlighting that. No, Napakaganda nung uh, na-emphasize ni Jelai. So, it doesn't mean that when you approach God in, in in confession or in 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 repentance, na suddenly bubunutin ka, hahatakin ka ng Panginoon galing doon sa sitwasyon na kinalagyan mo. And as what Jelai said, the Lord would not do that. Um, now, sometimes He does. But we can say that most of the time, is that doesn't happen because as what Jelai said, na there are lessons na matututunan mo. Okay? Lessons na, kasi, kasi uh, ang, ang gusto kasi natin, pag humingi tayo ng tawad, wala na, okay na. O, di ba? Yeah, we, oh, <laughs> wala. We don't want to, ano, we, we don't want to go through, as sabi dito ni Jelai, di ba, yung uh, process daw. <laughs> sabi niya dito sa chat. So, we don't want to go through the process of, an, ano man tawag natin dyan, purging or cleansing process. Gusto natin na, Okay, gusto natin instant, instant. Pati pag pati ano, pag pagkuha sa atin sa kinalagyan natin, gusto natin instant lahat. But it it's not like that. Even if we ask forgiveness from the Lord, it doesn't make kaya nitong ano, like these people of Judah. Sabihin natin itong well, let's even just we can just even isolate it sa mga tao na they remain faithful like the people like like Daniel himself. He prayed to the Lord, right? But not instantaneously. In fact, not not just in the time of Babylon, Daniel even continued on until the time of Persia, of Medo-Persia. So, ganun po yun. The Lord will let us undergo the process. And this is the practical thing. Huwag tayong maging practical. Kasi we are, our understanding of mercy and forgiveness right now is very perverted eh. Pag nakagawa tayo ng kasalanan, uh, tapos pat ipataw pa rin sa atin yung punishment kahit humingi na tayo ng tawad ang may kasalanan pa yung nagbigay ng punishment there's something terribly wrong with us <laughs> that's not that's not how God deals with things okay let's uh, talk about this brother Ed uh, how does this principle uh, work in our own lives in Japan, I believe this is uh, in continuation doon sa sinabi din ni Ma'am Laya no? Uh, Acts 3.19, mga kaibigan, sabi doon, Repent ye therefore, and be converted. So yun po, no? uh, are we, we are talking here about repentance, yung pagingin na tawa. And yet, ang sunod na karuntong doon is, we need to be converted. Kasi nga, pangako ng Panginoon, that your sins may be blotted out when times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So nakita po natin dito, mga kaibigan, not only that, we need we don't uh, we need to recognize we need to acknowledge na tayo nagkasala according doon sa Leviticus kanina but we need to be converted as well kaya kanina uh, if our heart are uncircumcising term na ginamit po doon ay may ano po parang napumunta tayo unless no napumunta tayo that na we need to surrender po sa Panginoon kung wala po yung surrendering wala acceptance and eventually 
there's no conversion, yun po yung mahirap po doon. Sabi po sa Steps of Christ, mga kaibigan, repentance includes sorrow for sin, and that turning away from it, we shall not renounce sin unless we see its sinfulness, and until we turn away from it in heart, there will be no ch real change in the life. Kaya nga po mga kaibigan, minsan nasabi natin, ay, ayoko na pumunta sa Panginoon, kasi, muna, bumalik muna sa Panginoon, kasi parang paulit-ulit na. It's because wala yung tunay na ano doon, yung tunay na repentance, mga kaibigan. And another principle that we need to consider is that kung tayo daw po pala, sabi ng Spirit of Prophecy, no, na nakita talaga natin yung dulot na kasalanan sa atin, ay, ay maging liwanag po tayo sa iba. That we make a warning for them not to make the same mistake. No? Yung po yung sabi dito. No? The clearer the light, sabi niya, that he has entered into, the stronger is his desire to set the feet of others in the right way. He does not gloss over his wayward course. No? Hindi po tayo dapat magmukmuk doon sa kasalang ginawa natin. Sabi niya, making his wrong a light thing, but leaves the danger signal that others may take warning. And he... He suggests no, sa, sa atin na uh, we should learn that in watchfulness in prayer is the only safety for both young and old. And eventually, uh, uh, yung example din na binigay dito sa Prophet Kings is like Solomon. Uh, on how makita natin, si Solomon faithful. God provided him everything. No? Mga kaibigan, he has the knowledge and yet, alam naman po natin yung kain na po niya. He, he, because he trusts, in his own wisdom and integrity, na sabi, ay, faithful naman ako, Panginoon eh. But he fall, no? he fell sa kanyang uh, sariling uh, situation, mga kaibigan. So we need to be watchful no? and in prayer na dapat maging aware na tayo na as long as nandito po tayo sa lupa, we are exposed to Satan's attacks. So we not to be parang isigulaki na lang kasi yun nga. Ay Lord, napaghingi na ako ng tawad eh. I think nasabi ko na converted na ako ngayon but we are still exposed to the darkness no we are still exposed to need that's why we need to consistently um daily connected with connecting in God mga kaibigan so yun lang po Thank you so much uh brother Ed so uh, in term ni brother Ed no maging easy gulaki na lang tayo kasi uh napakabait ng Panginoon what will happen if that will be our attitude is we will take it lightly. We will take sinning lightly. Kasi inisip na, mabuti na mga bangin, papatawarin niya lang ako, so we just keep on doing sin. That is not the purpose of the gospel. And that's a perverted view of the gospel. So thank you so much for sharing that, Brother Ed. How about uh, Brother Neil? Share your thought about this. Uh, principle, how does this principle work in our own lives? Nagdagan ko po yung sinabi ng mga kasama ko. Uh, yes, uh, mga kapatid, uh, God forgives and God delivers and yun niya, uh, God uh, restore. Yan. Merong pagpapatawad, merong uh, pagpapanumbalik, merong pagliligtas. So makikita po natin yung principle doon po sa binabanggit sa Leviticus 26 that we can apply today. Although may mga instances na tingin natin we might deserve it or we don't deserve it, sabi pa nga eh, God still receive. As long as we still hear that voice telling us uh, that we are guilty of that sins that we have committed, uh, God always ready to receive us and forgive us. And He is ready to restore our relationship Yun, yung spiritual connection with God and God delivers God saves po. kaya po in times uh, sa mga pagkakatao na minsan tayo po ay nakakaranas ng katulad ng nakanasan po nung, nung bansang Israel na sila po ay inalipin, sila po ay tawag nito sila po ay napadpad sa ibang lupalot ng lugar, ang Diyos ay nagbibigay po ng pag-asa sa mga nakakanasan po natin sa buhay and there is hope. Sabi pa nga, hope in advance. Meron pong pag-asa doon po sa mga promises na ibinigay po ng ating Panginoon. Isa doon sa pag-asa na ibinigay niya doon sa Leviticus. At marami pa pong pag-asa na we can relate 
po sa panahon po natin na dapat po nating panghawakan itong mga pag-asang ito sapagkat ang pag-asa po niya ang, ang salita po ng Diyos ay punong-puno po ng pag-asa tungkol po sa pagpapatawad, panunumbalik at pagliligtas. Pero let us remember po that uh, we don't take it for granted. Na minsan ay ang Diyos ay mapagpatawad, 'di ba? Nakita natin ang Diyos pinatawad niya yung bayan ng Israel. Let us remember po lalo na yung sinabi po nung aking kasama na there is sorrowful repentance tatalikod po tayo sa datihan datihan nating buhay iiwanan po natin yan at tayo po ay magbabagong buhay yun po yung sinabi doon sa 41 na if then their uncircumcised hearts be humble so god is telling us or or teaching us that our hearts be circumcised magbago there is a full conversion doon po sa event lalo na sa process of suffering or punishment na nakakanasan po natin. Thank you so much um, brother Neil no? Uh, process of punishment <laughs> in term ni brother Neil. So yeah, that's part of the consequence of sin and that's not something that tawag nito um uh, That, that doesn't go contrary, hindi yan kasalungat ng mercy ng Diyos. Okay, always remember that God is a God of justice as well, as He is the God of mercy. And always remember the Bible principles, kung ano yung iyong itinanim, yun ay iyong aanihin. And again, the same passage, that passage does not go against the principle of mercy. Ang problema kasi natin, maling-mali yung ating pagkaintindi sa mercy today. Kasi pag sinabi nating mercy, ibig sabihin nun, wala nang punishment. That's wrong. Hindi po. <laughs> wala nang consequence. Well, meaning, wala nang consequence. Hindi po ganun. That, that, that's not how the system of God works. Um, even with regards to our salvation, yung eternal life, ipinasa lang yun eh. Yung kamatayan, ipinasa kay Jesus Christ. Pero yung yung consequence nun, halimbawa, uh, uh, let's say for example, you have been smoking early on in your life. Oh? Uh, sabi ng Bible, kung ano yung iyong itinanim, yun yung aanihin. Eh ngayon, let's say, nagka lung cancer ka. Tapos nagbago buhay mo, lumapit ka sa Panginoon. And then you pray, Lord, kung totoo ka talaga, tanggalin mo ito sa akin. And then, kapag hindi nitinanggal ng Panginoon, mag-backslide ka. <laughs> It's not like that. Let's always remember, bagit ni Brother Neil earlier, that God is in the work of restoration. I also like to add into that, God is also in the work of cleansing, purifying, and purging. And if that, if if you would need to undergo through these challenges for you to be totally purged, then we should learn to accept it wholeheartedly. Thank you so much for sharing that, Brother Neil. Uh, Sir Jessalu, share your thoughts about this. Yes, um, napahaganda po ng ating ano no pag uh, pag discuss sa ating topic po ngayon. Um, gusto ko lang ibahagi din, in addition to what my um makasaman po natin yung mga senior po nila. Um, I'd like to say na ang pagnon po ay iba yung pagkakakilala or yung pagkakakilala ng siguro ibang ibang tao yung impression na um, nakasanayan natin kung ano ang Panginoon and how he deals with things now god actually desires bakit may mga consequences and this punishments no because in the first place sin is not one with us part is not sin of our lives sinning is not um originally mm-hmm. in our nature po makaibigan And these consequences are meant to create in us a perfect hatred for sin, mm-hmm. knowing na all this, um, na wala pong mabuting idudulot yung kasalanan, hindi lang sa sarili natin, but because most of the time, eh, we're just thinking na hindi ako binigyan ng awa, hindi ako pinatawad. But my dear brothers and sisters, think about yung mga tao na naging biktima din nang iyong pagkakasala. For example, yung kapatid mo or yung mga anak mo or yung family mo at kahit pa yung ibang mga tao. Actually, 
once we ano po, no? once we profess to become um Christians no we receive Jesus Christ into our lives and yet um we willfully uh, na hinayaan po natin na magkasala tayo again and again and again it actually weakens our um privilege no or yung right natin to witness for the Lord to become a light to this world for the Lord. And yan din po yung pinaka-purpose ng Panginoon sa Israelites. They've come into this covenant, makaibigan, to make the world know about who God is and to restore the world to the Lord. But the thing is that whenever they sin, that weakens actually yung ano nila eh, right nila to witness, no? So that's the thing. And then for us as well, sa sarili po natin, gusto ko lang basahin dito sa Raven Herald, July 4, 1912, paragraph 5. Sabi po dito, It is submission to sin that brings the great unhappiness of the soul. It is not poverty, not disobedience that lessens man's hope of gaining eternal life which the Savior came to bring him. True riches, true peace, true content, enduring happiness, these are found only in the entire surrender to God in perfect reconciliation to His will, mga kaibigan. So kung if we sin and then we receive the consequences of our sin, then let's not question, let's not argue with God because kung hindi po yan binigay yung consequence atin, ay according sa Panginoon, kung hindi man yan pinahintulutan na binigay sa atin, eh di, hindi yan pinahintulutan. But if that was permitted by God, then that is meant that to change you, to transform you, to bring you into reconciliation with Him. So let's not justify ourselves. In fact, if we are, if we truly are humble, knowing that we have sinned against the Lord, we will gladly receive it. Because thinking na, ay, may hope pa pala ako, nakikita ng Panginoon mm -hmm. na I can still be transformed, I can still be changed if I'll be, um, if He would allow me to be subject to the suffering of the consequences of my sin. So, yun po mga kaibigan. In fact, I'd just like to add into that, one of the biggest sign that a person is not ready for reconciliation, uh, one of the biggest proof that a person is not ready and is not right, the person's heart is not right with God, is kapag siya ay nagpumigwas. Kanyo po yun? If he is, if the person is trying to, um, ano nga yung term? He is trying to justify him or herself. Kapag nagsumubok pa siyang nagjustify, the very reason for that is in the first place, the person is not humble, in the other place, the person does not recognize the mistake. And yun yung pinakadahilan kung bakit siya nagpupumigwas. Now, does that person deserve forgiveness if in the first place, hindi niya nga naiintindihan or hindi niya tinatanggap na kasalanan yung kanyang ginawa? Of course not. <laughs> and so kaya nga, sinabi dito sa verse 41 na humble, be humble, and then accept the consequence of your iniquity. Mm. And then you will have hope. Napakaliwanag po noon. Sinasabi ng salita ng Diyos. The thing is, if there is no consequence makaibigan, no, we will not recognize that it, it is ano pala. No? Mm -hmm. Walang mabuting na idudulot yung pagkakasala sa atin. And without consequence, I believe then na uh, we will never be penitent. Mm -hmm. We will not be penitent. Penitent. And in fact, it's very important po yung, yung factor na yun na penitence, even in the, um, if we're going to study the heavenly sanctuary po, and the, the, the study on sanctuary, no? It's very important for the forgiveness of our sins to be penitent talaga. Mm -hmm. Because if we are not penitent, like we can say sorry, but if it's not true in our Hindi hearts, if there is no sincerity, <laughs> actually... Based on the Bible and the spirit of prophecy, that will not be accepted, mga kaibigan. Mm -hmm. Let me gi just give you a very, let me make this very, very practical. Ha? Pa itong application nito ba? So that you will see an example of the application of this one. Uh, for example, ang isang parent, no? If you're a parent, and because we have been reading this as well together with my wife, we have been reading this principle, a very same principle, although worded differently from the tawag nito, uh, guidance book. So the principle is that if you have a child and then you make a, made a rule for a child, 
So let's say, kapag sinabi mo sa bata na kapag ginawa mo yan, hindi ka makakalabas. You will not be allowed to go out. Or you will not be allowed to have this. So let's say, gumawa nga, the, the, the child went against the rule. Ngayon, simpre, ayan na. Lumapit ka na kasi nakagawa ng mistake or kasalanan yung iyong anak. What are you going to do to that child? Okay? Siyempre, lapit yung bata. Uh, papaaminin mo. Kung umamin, sabihin niya, ano, um, I'm sorry. Now, as a parent, sinabi na, na you want to forgive your child, di ba? You want to forgive your child. Now, what are you going to do? Are you going to break your rule? Maipapawalang bisa mo ba yung inyong nagkasunduan, yung batas na iyong ginawa? together with a child if you're gonna do that maiisip ng bata na ah okay so paghingi lang pala ako ng tawad kay mama tapos okay lang pala <laughs> so what are you actually doing you are perpetuating the sin so rather than doing that if you're you made a rule it. let it be let it be followed so that you are teaching, you are disciplining the child in the right way. Now, it doesn't mean pala, okay, although pinatawad na ako ni mama, and then you explain to the child carefully na, I love you so much, but you have to undergo this because this is the punishment. But then you give hope, but don't worry, um, everything will be fine afterwards. So, ganun yun siya. No, it's it not necessarily na okay, tanggalin mo na, baliin mo na yung rule dahil you want to be merciful to this to 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 people. Another application then is practical application, corporate application is yung sa simbahan. Halimbawa, somebody committed a heinous uh, sin na ikinahi ikinahihiya ng simbahan. Okay? Uh, let's say, for example, somebody committed adultery in the church. I mean, uh, adultery. And adultery, um, if you're going to study the manual very, very carefully, church manual, the punishment of adultery po is, uh, anong term yan? <laughs> uh, this fellowship. This fellowship. However, some people, just they just censure that. Why just censure that? It's very, very clear. The, the, yung... Kapag adultery po ang ginawa, it is this fellowship. And some people, when they are disfellowed, magpapamigwas pa. Sabi nila, ah, bakit ganito, ganyan, ganyan. Well, the thing is, you don't disfellow that person for that person to be lost. You disfellow that person para maintindihan niya that that kind of sin is unacceptable. You are not doing that to condemn the person because anyway, if that person really repents, goes back to the Lord, get restored, his soul is not lost. So, kuha niyo po yun. So, the thing is, that's how God deals with things. No, Hindi niya, he, he wants us it. to learn to accept the consequence of our sins. And he that, wants to, ha may we have a perfect hatred for sin, just hmm. like Jesus Christ po. Ano. And again, yes, the, the reason for these consequences is not for us to suffer. Suffering is just actually the consequence be. <laughs> but the real purpose of God allowing these things, allowing us to undergo through the consequences of our sins is for us to hate sin, as what Sir Jessalo mentioned, and for us to come closer to Him, not the other way around. Na, hindi dahil na sa consequence tayo na ating sin, magalit tayo sa mga tao na nag-execute. No? So magalit tayo sa Panginoon. Or magalit tayo sa Panginoon. No, magalit tayo sa ating kasalanan. Ganun dapat yung ating uh, mangyari sa atin. So I hope that uh, the thing is, it's very, actually, very clear. A, let me just add quickly, no, it's a very merciful act din mga kaibigan, no, if we, if God allows us to go through our consequences because that means He doesn't want us to continue on suffering, no, mm -hmm. bearing the burdens of our our guilt, no, mga kaibigan. He wants to cleanse us and He wants us to be free. So yun po. Okay. Uh, Comments dito, quickly. May Samantha, sister Samantha Claire. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Tayo lang naman ang pabago-bago. If he says yes or no, he will do. He is a faithful God. Even though we are not faithful. Kaya in our time today, God is more than willing to help us if we allow him again to intervene. 
And syempre, makikita talaga naman sa buhay natin na we accepted the forgiveness from God by a changed life. Oh, 180 degrees turn away from the old sinful life we have. Ayan, so 180 degrees. Ibig sabihin nyo, iniwanan mo talaga, di ba? <clears throat> you go into the other direction. Palayo sa kasalanan. So thank you so much for sharing that, Sister Samantha Claire. Sabi ni Sister Almi Barte, um, God forgives but we should first acknowledge our sin and accept the consequences of our sin. There, <clears throat> there the pouring of God's mercy and forgiveness. <clears throat> Gaya po ng isang kakilala ko na ang sabi sa akin ay sorry po ma'am kung may nagawa man ako. Meaning hindi pa rin niya kinilala <coughs> ang kan- pagkakamali niya. Kaya siya ang nag- nabigyan ng parusahan. Same true sa atin pag nagkasala tayo, we keep on justifying ourselves instead of recognizing our sin. Oh, maraming ganyan no? Sabihin na uh, sorry po kung may nagawa man akong kasalanan. <laughs> Thank you for sharing this, Sister Almi. This is very practical. Have you experienced that? Somebody tells you, sorry ha, kung may nagawa man akong kasalanan. What does that mean? That means, kung may nagawa man akong kasalanan, according to you. <laughs> that is implying na the person doesn't necessarily recognize sing sin. Kasi, tingin mo, kung, kung may nagawa akong kasalanan, meaning, depende sa iyo. Kasalanan sa kanya. <laughs> sa kanya, hindi yun kasalanan. Ah, uh, Terrible. We should, that kind of attitude po is not Christ, Christ-like. That's not Christian. Ayusin po natin buhay natin. That's the attitude of the devil, no? Very, oh. uh, <laughs> hindi siya sincere. He said sorry to God if we're gonna look at the spirit of prophecy, but the Lord knows very well his heart. He's not sincere. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And and uh, we can really apply this as well in our prayer when we say, Lord, kung may nagawa man akong kasalanan, patawarin mo ako. Alam mo, masyado tayong general dyan. You know what that implies? That implies you don't even recognize your sins. When we approach to God, especially with regards to our tawag nito, to, with regards to repentance and asking for forgiveness, tell the Lord the specific sin and recognize it so that mamulat din ikaw na mali yung iyong ginawa. Sister Joy Salvano, thank you so much for that comment, Sister Almi Barte. That's very practical, no? Maraming tao na ganyan. <clears throat> Sister Joy Silvano sabi niya, it is very important that we admit what we did wrong and truly feel sorry that we did it. We must come to God and pray using scriptures and ask Him to forgive us and believe that He does. Ayan, amen. Thank you so much, Sister uh, Joy Silvano. So mahalaga talaga na uh, akuin natin, tanggapin natin, kilalanin natin yung ating kasalanan. Okay, uh, Brother Neil, you have something to quickly add? Yan, dagdag ko lang po mga kapatid. Uh, ang punishment na bunga ng ating pong ginagawa or resulted from our forefathers, it helped us to be awakened para tayo po ay mamulat dun sa kondisyon na kinalalagyan po natin, lalo na yung kasalanan. Sapagkat nais ng Diyos na tayo po ay magbago at mamulat po tayo na Ayaw na ayaw ng Diyos ng kasalanan. At nais ng Diyos na tayo po ay iligtas, isalba sa kondisyon sapagkat ang nais, ang nais ng Diyos ay magligtas, iligtas tayo po sa ating kondisyon. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Neil. And also, before we end, I also like to add up, uh, I think it's First Corinthians who mentioned, that the Lord will not allow us to go through trials or temptations na hindi natin mapagtatagumpayan. Kung if there is a consequence na ipihahintulot ng Panginoon sa atin, accept it and just go through the process. Because if the Lord gives it, you know that that can be overcome. Kasi hindi tayo bibigyan ng Diyos ng bagay na hindi natin mapagtatagumpayan. And the promise is that at the end of the line, there is forgiveness, there is reconciliation, there is restoration, complete cleansing. Yun ang goal ng ating Panginoon. Not just yeah. to give us mercy. just You let go of sin. <laughs> yeah. So the Lord wants us to let go of sin. Let's for sing together for our closing song. song. Let us sing number 432. Shall we gather at the river? Shall we gather at the river? Where my 
feed of God. We need crystal tight forever. Throne of God, throne of God. Yes, we will gather at the river. The beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather we the saints at the river, not lost by the throne of God. On the margin of the river, washing up its silver spray, we will walk and worship ever all the happy golden day. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather we the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Let's have our closing prayer with Brother Neil. Brother Neil, can you pray for our viewers? Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, Indeed, we are thankful for this wonderful study that we have this morning. You are always faithful in your words, and you never break your promise. Father, thank you for telling us the hopes, promises, and assurance that there is forgiveness, there is deliverance, and there is restoration in spite of the situation that we are having right now. Although we backslide, we choose to see the Father as long as we humble our hearts, you are ready to receive us. Father, help us to always be firm in your words, help us to learn in this process and to grow in faith. Thank you, Father, for all the things that we have learned today. Help us to apply it in our lives. Bless us today. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Neil. And once again, thank you so much for joining us live today. For those of you who are watching from our YouTube channel and from our Facebook page, thank you so much for joining us. If you have not yet done so, don't forget to share this, especially for um, your friends uh, from this study. Um, maybe they would they can watch this later on. We would like to see you again tomorrow po, the same time, 9 a.m. So we'll have one more episode tomorrow. We're doing this every Sunday until Thursday. And again, uh, as what we have been saying uh, recently, Pafco Online is already online. And go ahead and enroll. Or if you have anyone who would benefit from the free training we're offering from Pafco Online, then just send them uh, the link. Ang link po natin is online. That Pafco, that's P A F C O E, dot O R G, online Pafco dot O R G. See you again po tomorrow, 9 a.m. God bless you. Natatandaan po natin, mal na mal tayo ng ating Panginoon.